to Hop Along Studio. So today I want to share with you my love for Japanese papers and how you can use these papers in your creative projects. So first of all, I'm going to go into a little bit of paper nerd mode here and share with you a few of the things that I love about these Japanese papers. So when we're talking about Japanese papers, a part of the reason I like using them in my projects is because they're very unique. They have a different look, finish, and feel to them, and that adds some really interesting creative possibilities in my art journaling projects. So when we're talking about Japanese paper, I like using the term Japanese paper or washi, and washi in Japanese basically means Japanese paper. But if you do hear the term rice paper, often people are talking about Japanese paper, but please be aware that Japanese paper is actually not made with rice. Japanese paper is usually made out of three different materials. Uh, kozo, also known as the mulberry bush, that is what a lot of Japanese paper is made out of because it is readily available, it makes a very strong paper that can take a lot of medium. There's also gampi paper, and gampi paper is made from a plant, but you can't actually cultivate it easily. So in Japan, they actually go out through the mountains looking for it to harvest it. So it isn't as common just because of the fact that it's a little bit harder to get a hold of. And the third type of bush that's used is called Mitsumata, and that is also known as an oriental paper bush and that is also used in a lot of Japanese paper. So what makes Japanese paper so unique is either the patterns on them or even just the process in which it's made. It's a very laborious process to create these traditional papers. Another reason some of them are interesting are because they are printed. For example, this one is shiogami paper. This is silk screen printed paper. So every single color you see on this paper is a separate silk screening. So some of these papers may have two silk screen prints on it, it may have 12, it might have six. When you think about it, it's a lot of labor to get one sheet of paper printed. These three I plan to use for book binding. And the reason I want to use it for book binding is even though it's beautiful, it looks quite fragile, it's very, very strong. You would have to work quite hard to tear this paper. And so that's why I want to use it for book binding covers because it will handle a bit of the wear and tear that I plan to put on these papers. One of these other papers that I really like to use is this tissue weight paper. And you can see with each of these designs, it has a very strong texture. And so each of these I use in different ways in my creative projects. Uh, they're very light, but again, they're still very strong. I actually have to work pretty hard to tear apart this paper. And so that's a beautiful thing about these papers is as much as they look very delicate, they're very lightweight, they have beautiful patterns on them, they are strong. Because of that, that makes them really great when you're using it with wet mediums. All of these are Japanese paper, so you can tell the texture of the back, it's a Japanese paper, but it has a more commercially printed. It's an easy way of just adding images onto your art journal pages, but if you compare this one to this one, there's no contest in the vibrancy of color and just even the workmanship between this paper and this paper. You find a lot more of these ones in your local scrapbooking or paper crafting stores. Well, a lot of these ones you will find in your local art store. This is another type of Japanese paper. This is called the Tomo River paper. It's actually made from sustainably harvested trees and it is very, very smooth and very light. It's actually used more for calligraphy than anything else. This does not take water well. I tried adding medium to this paper. It didn't end well at all. It went completely wrinkly. So just so you know, not all Japanese papers are meant to be added in your art journal with wet mediums. So now that I've shared with you why I think these papers are amazing, I'm going to show you how to tear some of this paper, how to add into your art journal, and some samples of how I've used them in my own creative projects. So I want to show you how you can take this paper apart to add it in a more customized way onto your art journal pages. A lot of the designs you see are, are meant to be like one sheet designs and aren't necessarily meant to be cut apart. But in a sheet like this that I got from some um, is meant to come apart. So I did do one here already. I use a water technique to tear it and this one here I cut with it. And if you haven't seen my water technique from my last couple of videos, I will just show you very quickly how to take this paper apart. I'm just saying using a watercolor brush, you could really use any brush that you have on hand. Dip it in water and come along the edge. And what this does is it softens the paper so you can tear it a little bit easier and a little bit more accurately. And I'm just going to come around the other edge as well. And even though this is the same technique, you could use the 
tissue paper and with napkins this has a very different feel once you start tearing it so when you tear it you'll see the fibers this is a much more fibrous paper than a napkin or tissue paper the fibers are really trying to stay together even when you're taking them apart which is why water is a really great way of changing this paper and being able to soften enough to get it apart I just want to go around and do that until you get all your edges and so right now it doesn't look really great. It looks quite fuzzy. And even if you compare it to doing this to a piece of tissue paper, where if you just run your brush along your paper and you divide it, this is a much less fibrous type line. It basically tears a lot cleaner than I would say the rice paper does. But that's okay because as long as it's a white backed paper, it's not a problem because you can also run your hand along the edge here and just gently clean up a lot of these little fibers and that can clean it up enough that you can add it onto your page. The other thing is because this is white, it will disappear mostly on your page. The rice paper is a bit of a thicker medium. It's always going to be a little bit thicker, a little bit stronger. So you're going to see a little bit more of the edges and that's why you need to try to clean them up as best you can. The other option is you just cut it with a set of scissors, but that leaves a very strong line. So I want to show you very quickly how you can add this paper to your surface and if you've seen both my napkin video and my tissue video it is also a very similar process but I will walk you through it again and it's a little bit different with the matte medium and this paper just because it is so much stronger that's why I love using the Japanese papers. They're a little less translucent, which makes them work really nicely in a journal when you want to have it as a base layer. So I'm just lining that up. And the nice thing about it is you can actually pull it off where you could never do that with a napkin or a tissue where it would just tear. Instead, so you can line it up carefully. And I've added a little bit of medium on the bottom and I'm going to add medium on the top. And for this one, I'm just using my Liquitex matte medium. So that's the bottle I have going at the moment. I usually sometimes go between gold and, and Liquitex depending on on what's available to me at the time. And what's nice about this is it does it is strong enough that you can go over it several times without the paper being damaged. And that's why I like using a lot of the Japanese paper, just because it is very strong. It looks delicate. It looks like it would be very hard to manage and maintain on a project, but it is very nice to lay down. And I love the, the color in it. Even the more commercially printed ones, like these ones, I think they do such a great job in having really nice color on, on the paper. And I think part of that is the Japanese paper, because it is handmade, is a little bit of a higher quality paper. So I think a lot of manufacturers do try to do something nice with them. And you can also get a lot of these just in white or off-white paper. A lot of the washi paper is actually bleached in the sun to give it a more natural bleached color so that they don't have to add chemicals. So if you are a person who likes a more organic paper, I would definitely suggest taking a look at some of these Japanese papers. The more traditional papers are always dried in the sun. I think if you are using something that's a little less traditional, chemicals may be used, which is a pretty amazing thing, actually, that we still have paper that is made in this more traditional matter. And that's probably why I gravitate towards this. I do like the whole total artisan take that the Japanese still have on papers like some of these paper mills have been around for 300 years and they're still running and that's an amazing thought and so unlike some of the other papers it is strong enough where I can go back over it if I feel like there's an area that isn't completely down I actually can run my fingers over it which you can't really do when you're using napkins and even tissue you need to be very kind of careful doing that so that's basically the very basic way of adding a rice paper onto your surface so i want to show you a page where i did use a combination of different japanese papers on one page i started with a watercolor background which generally if i was using napkins i wouldn't have really started with a much color on the background but because the washi paper is a lot stronger and a little less translucent it can hold up against that darker background i then added in these areas here and here i basically added a piece going across here with this very fine washi paper that has a fun textural pattern on. Once that dried I actually ended up going in and adding a more watercolor on top. When I added that washi paper what I did is I only added matte medium on the bottom. I didn't seal the top so that way I could add watercolor and it could absorb into the surfaces why areas like this are darker and areas like this have kept more the traditional white color. And then I actually took the images that I had cut and torn out of the washi paper. And so you can see that by cutting it, you end up with this very, very strong line. And unless you want that really strong line, I would say generally tear. Uh, this particular one was torn, very similarly to this. 
these ones as well, as well as this one. You can see in here there's a tiny bit of white showing where it kind of overlapped, but that looks a little bit more like a highlight. In these areas too, it's very hard to tell because that white pretty much disappears onto the back of the paper. And then when I was adding my quote, I decided to use a Tomo River paper and then I added matte medium on top and that was a mistake. <laughs> One, I realized with that river paper, if you are going to add your own writing and you're gonna be using a permanent pen, let it dry overnight. I was using a permanent pen. You might be able to tell in between here, it did smear. So I've actually gone over it again with more permanent pen in a darker color to try to hide the fact that it's smeared. And this is also quite wrinkly. One thing I've realized is these ones that are meant more for uh, fountain pen writing, you need to stick with a fountain pen to write with them. Don't use a lot of wet mediums on them. And again, as we were talking about with Japanese paper, that's the thing with Japanese paper. It isn't all the same. Some takes mediums better, other ones take mediums worse. They're all have a little bit different properties. So be aware of that when you're choosing your paper. In this example where I use this particular Japanese paper on the background, it's hard to see, but really all of this texture in here is all done by tearing and ripping this particular paper. You can actually see the edges there and I left them like that. And here too, because I actually was trying to create this kind of bird shape in here and I wanted to add color to it. So instead of having it recede, I wanted them to stick out and be quite bold in the project. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that this is giving you ideas on how you can use Japanese paper in your projects. And if you've enjoyed this video, if you could like it, subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. Also leave a comment below. I would love to hear any questions you have or if you have any comments or you have your own learnings of Japanese paper, I would love to learn from you as well. And if you'd like to see the full article and instructions about Japanese paper, you can see it on my website, hopalongstudio.com. I hope you take time for creative self-care this week and I will see you next time.